Hi friends, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can leverage LinkedIn to land your first data science job the same as I did. I applied for more than 500 jobs and I only got one interview. But when I started to leverage LinkedIn the right way, I ended up having opportunities to freelance, work on projects and ended up landing the job that I wanted in data science in the UK. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with all the hands-on so that hopefully you can replicate the same things and get the same results. So today we're going to go through seven chapters, which are first, optimize your profile. Second, create and share content on LinkedIn. Three, connect with recruiters. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it on LinkedIn. Four, create company target lists. I'm going to show you exactly how you can find the companies that recruit for data scientist role and then you can target them on LinkedIn, find people that are recruiting for those roles and all these things. Number five, I'm going to show you a template on how you can message recruiters. It's straightforward, it's easy, I'm going to give you my template, you can use it, you can just adapt your details on it and send it to recruiters and they usually respond to it. Number six, I'm going to show you how to create an engagement list. Instead of scrolling on your feed on LinkedIn with a bunch of random posts, I'm going to show you how you can build a list of only the creators or recruiters that you targeted and your feed will only show them. So you only have to interact with their content and all the rest, all the other noise will magically disappear. And number seven is engage and connect with data scientists as well because that's very important and I'll explain to you everything in this video. Let's dive into it. So number one is optimize your profile. This is crucial. The first thing people look at is your profile, whether you talk to a recruiter or even if you share some content, people are curious and they go and look who is that person and they want to see something very clean, something well presented, something that makes you understand in two, three seconds what the person does. And this is what you want to do. I created a video called LinkedIn Masterclass where I go five minutes in depth into how to optimize your profile. So I'll link it in the description and you can find it in here somewhere as well if you want a real detailed hands-on on how to do it. But let me show you quickly the basics that you need to sort out. So first, you have the banner section. The banner section is like the free ads that you have on LinkedIn. This is where you can put in big what you do and people, that's the first thing that they see because that's the biggest part of your profile. Second, have a nice profile picture. If you prefer smiling, go for it. If not, more intrigued, go for it as well. But a nice profile picture is always welcome. Third here, you have the tagline or the headline. That one is crucial. You explain what you do. If you have a business, you explain what you sell. If you're looking for a job, you explain what you do and all these things. These three is the entrance point. If people don't understand what you do in three seconds, just with these three things, then you lost them. They just leave. Then you have a few other things that are important. You have the about section and in the about section, you explain what you do professionally and a little bit of personally. Who are you? Who is Anas, for example? A little bit of something about you, your background. You don't have to necessarily be very, very professional in there. You can be very open, but this is completely up to you. Give something to people to know about you as well. Next, update the experience part. The experience is where you put all your internships, all the jobs you've worked on, and try to be as explicit as possible, give a bunch of details so that people know what you did before. You can even add some statistics and things like this because people love, love those things. So just have a nice experience section. You want people to know what you've been doing before, before applying to these new jobs as well. And lastly in here, you have the education part. The education is very important. You explain what's your background, uh, all, uh, all your education, the university, the undergraduate, you can even go as, uh, as far as college and things like this. You don't have to go too far, but anything that is important to mention, just leave it in there. There is no harm to it. Number two is create and share content. This is very important because when you apply for jobs, when you network and all the things that I'm going to show you throughout this video, it's good when you have an optimized profile. It means that you're very serious, you know what you're doing and all these things. 
but when you create and share content as well it shows a little bit of expertise and when you're applying for jobs usually people like that for example i have a friend who is applying for jobs using linkedin and he's also leveraging his internal network which is amazing he told me that his approach right now is only finding opportunities internally and not focusing on content creation because it takes a lot of time and usually if you've never done it before it can be a little bit intimidating and it shouldn't be creating content should be as simple as sharing what you learn sharing what you do sharing what you like and people will usually react to it and you can have a nice conversation behind it the thing is if you speak to a recruiter the first thing they're going to do they're going to check your profile and if you see that you're active and you have some engagement they'll find you more interesting that's the way the human brain works even when you apply for a job these days a personal brand is very important people would rather have someone who has some sort of following they make some noise in in the in social media because they can also enhance the brand of the company as well so let me show you briefly some type of content that i write and maybe you can get inspiration from it so here on my profile in the activity section you'll find all my previous posts you can write posts they could be text they could be pictures they could be videos you have a bunch of everything that you can mix and match the post can be as short as this one that I wrote in here and or they could be longer. It really depends on you. They can be technical, they can be just some tips, they can be a story. It's very open. It's up to you to find what are the things that you, you want to share with your audience and just do it consistently. The, the one tip I can give you in here as well is just keep it very easily readable. Don't overwhelm people with big thick paragraphs. They don't like that. And if you're making a video, don't make it too long because it's just LinkedIn. And if you're writing a post, don't make it too long. If it's too long, make it an article and share it then on LinkedIn. Remember, there is no perfect post. So don't overthink it, go for it, and you'll see results coming bit by bit over time. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I have 82% of people watching my videos that are not subscribed. If you're one of them, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel massively. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Number three is connect with recruiters. Let me show you how you can do it. When you go on LinkedIn, you can type tech recruiters on the search bar and then you go into filter by people. When you filter by people, it already gives you 426,000 people, which is a little bit too much and you filter by the region where you want to look for a job. Here we put Manchester, for example. We can already see we have 850 results. Some of them will be third connections, meaning that we don't have anyone in common. Some of them could be second connection, which, is, which I usually do because I already have a little bit of a network. If you don't, you can go for third degree connection. First degree means the people that you're already connected with. So here we have 407 potential people that you can speak to and they recruit in data, in technical field. So these people are very relevant that you can speak to, you can connect to and all this sort of fun stuff. You can even look for data recruiters if you want, but don't just write recruiters because that's very vague. They don't want recruiters that recruit for marketing, finance, you want the data or the technical recruiters, okay? So you have here 685 results, which is not too bad. Then what you can do is simply connect with them. So you can either send a note if you do it from your computer, or you can just connect without sending a note. Usually what I do is I connect without sending a note. It just makes it easy. You're not showing them that you want anything from them. And if your profile is optimized and you share content, you just look more legit. So just connect directly and then when they accept, which they do 80% of the time because they are recruiters and they recruit in tech or in data and you're a data scientist, so they're more likely to accept you. Then I'm going to show you a template on how to reach out to them and get the most value from it. So keep watching. Number four, create companies target list. Speaking to a variety of recruiters is great, that's very broad, but you have to focus in some companies they want to work for. If you already know a few, list them out. If not, let me show you where you can find them. In here on Google, I wrote the top 10 companies that hire for data scientists in the UK, and I got a few links that look very interesting. Like here, for example, top 10 data science co companies in the UK. These are companies that are very, very data oriented, 
Quantum Black, Star Count, Experian, all these things. You can look for other links and you can just do your own top 10 companies that you want to work for. You can put them into a sheet or you can put them into your notes or whatever. You find many and many. List your top 10, top 15 maximum. Don't go too much. These are the big names. You can add them as well. So then what you can do is you can go into, for example, LinkedIn here and you can add the current company. For example, if you chose EY, for example, you can do EY in here and you will get two responses. Yes, that's very niche. We're looking in Manchester. We're looking for a tech recruiter in EY. So we have here two people that you can speak to, you can connect with them, you can send them the template that I'm going to share with you. That template is made for recruiters. So if that's a person working internally, then the approach will be different. You, you have to approach them in a more friendly tone, get to know them and all these things. And if they share content on LinkedIn, I always advise people to first interact with their content before getting into connecting and all these things. Spend a week two weeks engaging with those interesting people that way they'll get to know you via the comments and when you're going to connect it'll be just a no-brainer they will be like okay i know this guy or this girl okay let me know in the comment section what are the things that you struggle with while using linkedin because linkedin is a very powerful tool to get jobs to to find opportunities or to create opportunities but a lot of people that i know really struggle using it they don't understand the ins and outs of it they just think that they need to share certifications and they apply for jobs using easy apply but they don't really understand the ins and outs of linkedin so share with me what are your struggles using linkedin in the comment section number five is message recruiters usually i send the message to a recruiter after connecting with them so they're already in my inbox it says usually something like this here is the template hi michael i appreciate having you in my network i see that you've been recruiting in tech for x years in city let's say manchester I'm currently looking for my new data science role. Are there any openings? Here are a few things about me. Two years of experience in data science working in tech, recruitment and finance. One year of data science freelancing, code in Python, SQL and Java, master in computer science. Looking forward to having a chat about it. So this message has everything. It has a quick intro, like you did a quick background about them. You know they are tech recruiters, they've been working for a few years in that industry and also from what city. So this first part shows that you did a little bit of a research about them, you know what they do, where they work, how long, and then you share that you're a data scientist looking for, for your next opportunity, and then you briefly tell them what you can do. So then when they have an opportunity, they'll be like, yeah, this person contacted me, they have two years of experience, yeah, this role is a little bit senior for them. They'll be like, yeah, this guy talked to me, there's a junior opportunity, he might be a good fit, and they can contact you. And you'll see that many recruiters, they're really happy to jump on a call to get to, to, to understand what you need and all these things because that's how they make money as well. So don't be shy about it. Don't say like, please, or ask like they're doing a favor for you. No, you're there because you need a service and they provide that service and they're paid for it. Number six is create engagement list. When you start connecting with these people, when you start connecting with creators, with, with the recruiters, you want to keep engaging with them and that's the goal and most of the recruiters these days and creators they share content and you want to engage with them and you don't want to scroll on your feed finding a few random people with certifications and all these things you want to have a list of people you want to engage with and i'm going to show you right now how to do it but first you need to have a list of these people write them down on a note or something and i'll show you on linkedin how you can do it directly so here on linkedin you just go in the search bar you click on blank search you go into posts here in posts before sorting we can choose members so for example i will put some random names some friends that i follow myself so i'm just going to show you like rob and another rob we can add in here just going to show you with three names here so they're good friends as well so here as you can see now we can only see their posts but as you can see here 11 months we don't want that we go into filter by latest and also we're going to filter by the past 24 hours because we have to engage every day and we only want to see the past 24 hours so here we can see rachel here her latest post rob and rob here again just 24 hours one post each means they post once a day 
and here you are you have like 10 or 15 or 20 people in a list you can have a list for recruiters you can have a list for data scientists you can have a list for startup founders whatever create your list put people that are active in there do the same approach and then every day instead of going on linkedin go into your bookmarks and you can open each tab i'll show you right now and engage with these people it'll take you less than 15 20 30 minutes maximum to engage with everyone and you'll make a lot of noise and you'll be creating opportunities not finding them so here let me show you when you're sorted here you can just go on bookmarks and you can do a new bookmark in here bookmark, add to bookmarks you can give it a name linkedin for example recruiters tech and that's it in here and it's done so now if you want to go you go, go in here and you're going to find it it will refresh and you'll come in here when you come back tomorrow you'll find the same things but the newer 24 hours posts by these people that you've put on the list many many people i speak to they don't know there is this feature available to them and that's a very powerful one number seven is connect and engage with data scientists as well why because if you are creating content you're more likely to be creating content for data scientists so you want people to engage with you. You want also to learn from these people. And all of this will increase your visibility. You can't only rely on recruiters because that's a way for you to get more opportunities of work. But you wanna also build a brand, something that gives you a reputation. It's a whole game. That's why I told you at the beginning, each step is crucial. Having an optimized profile, creating content, reaching out to recruiters and knowing how to find them having an engagement list so you don't waste your time scrolling on linkedin like you do on instagram and also connected with data scientists in your niche to learn from them to gain visibility and also to grow your brand so that's it i hope you enjoyed this video i tried to go through each and every points without spending too much time on it please if there is any point they want me to expand on and create a full video on it just let me know in the comment section and I'll make it for you. That'll be my pleasure. And remember, we're not on LinkedIn to find opportunities. We're on LinkedIn to create them. And in this video, I showed you exactly how to do it. By leveraging all these tips, I hope you can get your first data science job or your new data science job if you already have experience. I made a video a few weeks ago about how to succeed as a data scientist, as an intern or a graduate. And I share all the tips that I want you to know in order to succeed in data science and not make the same mistakes as I did before. Again, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps immensely. And thank you for watching.